She is the lead designer of Google Glass, one of the products from Google X Group. She joined the Glass team in 2011 when the prototype was still a phone attached to a scuba mask. And she has since guided the team to iterate towards the current minimalist design, which looks really fashionable and has, I think, been noticed by a lot of designers and awards. Prior to joining Google, Isabel worked at Fuse Project, designing a wide variety of products, ranging from the Nuke color Samsung tele televisions to Swarovski exhibitions and eyewear for children in third world. She has also designed several furniture exhibits, at, which have been ex exhibited at Milan Furniture Fair. Isabel grew up in Sweden and was influenced early on by Scandinavian minimalist design. Her ultimate goal as a designer is to make people's lives easier and more beautiful. Sounds very familiar to Ness's mission too. And without further ado, let's start watching a video of Isabel. Okay, so I'll engage the system. And now the car is in control. I didn't even imagine that self-driving cars would exist in my lifetime. So to know that the technology exists and I get to work on it firsthand is pretty incredible. At Google X, we really take breakthrough technologies and apply them in areas where we think it could really transform the world. So part of it is moonshot thinking, setting a really amazing goal uh, that is really inspiring, that could be possible but feels almost like science fiction. What's special about Google X is first and foremost the people. When I first heard about the job, I was thinking, how would I fit in at Google X? Coming here, I didn't feel odd at all um, because everybody's odd in their own way. So I came to Google X actually through a bit of circuitous route. I went to grad school and got my PhD in a field of nanophotonics. So basically I went from uh, microphotonics to nanophotonics. It's certainly common in companies around here in Silicon Valley that the engineering workforce is very largely male and maybe they have, you know, 10% women or 20% uh, or something like that. Uh, we'd like to get to 50% women. If we have just men and not women, if we have just people of a particular race or just of a different particular background or from a particular country, that's not going to be helpful because we're not going to think of the breakthrough things. It's by harnessing all this uh, communal creativity, if you will, uh, that we're able to do what we do. What we're really looking for is passionate people who love what they do and love to work on high impact projects that have a technology angle to them. And you know, we make a little prototype and then we're like, yes! Then I run around the entire office and show it off to everybody and I'm like, look at this, this is so cool. I'm an optics person, I'm a hardware engineer. If you think that you're in this very narrow field and there's no, you know, no opportunity in Google being mostly a software company, uh, you might be surprised like I was. I came to Google X fresh out of school. I have friends that go to work and it's just a job, but here this is so much more than that. This is um, where we were uh, about uh, one and a half years ago when I first started. Uh, it's literally a phone next, stuck next to your head. Now we're here. Knowing that when I come to work, I'm doing something that's making history definitely puts a smile on my face and gets me excited to come to work every single day. Hi everybody. Um, thank you for having me. Um, I like to talk a little bit today about staying uncomfortable. I think this is a good example of doing just that, um, being in front of so many um, talented women in, in tech. It's, it's pretty incredible. So I hope I have something that can inspire you. I, I'm not really sure, but um, I'll, I'll do my best. So I think generally in life, we, we strive for comfort, trying the finding the perfect home, our perfect partner, and, and trying to be really comfortable. And I think in our careers, and what have helped me is, is to do the very opposite, is to um, put yourself in situations where you are really, really uncomfortable. I think that pushes you to the next level. And I think um, 
that's why I moved to San Francisco about uh, five years ago. Um, I had a great life in Sweden, bunch of friends, family, were designing furniture and exhibiting things and just having kind of an easy life. Um, so then I thought, um, I think I can have more impact than that. And there's so much exciting things going on in, in, in San Francisco, so I thought, why don't I just try and go there? Just drop everything and move into a little shoebox and pay thousands of dollars that I didn't have, um, and, and, and just not being able to speak the language properly, um, and into a tech world. I, I'm really not from, a, from, from tech. I've always loved tinkering and building things, but when I moved here, I didn't have a smartphone. I hardly knew what a flat screen TV was, and, and all of a sudden, I was in the center of, of tech. And I thought, what did I give myself into? I'm crazy. Um, and I remember my first um, day at, at, at Fuse Project, which was a design consultancy that I um, started working at. And the project was to design the next generation tablet. And I'm like, what is a tablet? <laughs> I, I had no, no concept of it. So I, I started to look for inspiration of things that, you know, things that I love, things that you know, I think, you know, make life more beautiful, like furniture or jewelry. Um, and, and I pinned my little pictures up on the wall, um, and then I, I looked around and I saw all the dude pictures, and it was just full of computers. There was just computers on the wall, and then I had some rings and a little chair, and, uh, and I thought, gosh, this is really embarrassing right now. I really don't know what I'm doing. Um, and, but, but the cool thing was that the art director was like, take down all the computers, this is where we're going. Um, and really taking inspiration from something that is not um, familiar. And that was the first moment since I moved here when I realized it's, it's good to be different. And it's good to be uncomfortable. So I worked there for a few years and it, it was amazing and I was getting more and more comfortable. Not good. Um, so when I got a call from, from Google, I, I thought, Google? Do you make, you don't make things. You, you, it's on the computer, the stuff that I don't know so much about. Um, but then she said, well, you know, we're working on things like self-driving cars. Self-driving cars? She's like, yeah, you probably heard about it. I was like, yeah, yeah, totally. I definitely heard about that. <laughs> Not. Um, but, um, but I thought, okay, I'll take the meeting, you know? Let, this is interesting. Let's get a little uncomfortable. And it definitely was. I'm sure you've heard about the Google hiring process, and um, you, you're stuck in a room for 10 hours straight, and people asking you really strange questions. Um, and I didn't meet one designer. So I thought, what would I do here? There were, there were optical engineers, and mechanical engineers, and UX people, and Everybody except for my kind, um, and also the only woman, of course. Um, so I thought, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do this. I'll take this job because it made me really uncomfortable. Oh, and did I mention they wouldn't tell me what I was going to work on? <laughs> um, so you saw this in the video, but the, on, on my first day, that's when I found out what I was going to work on, and they showed me this. And that was uncomfortable. <laughs> Not exactly what I was going for, but, um, and I saw this, and it was a room full of software engineers um, on their computers, and they were actually using this. They were, I don't know how really, and this is, I, I can't even, um, <laughs> let me put it back in my Chanel box here. Um, <laughs> but, but I, I, I got really excited about um, the vision that, that was underlying uh, around all this tech. So, so <clears throat> my job was to, um, and this is quote uh, my brief, make glass comfortable and beautiful. So I thought I could um, talk to you a little bit about uh, my approach um, in trying to do that. Um, yeah, so this is what we see today. Again, it's very early days, it's Explorer Edition. We're excited about um, where we came from and where we are today, but obviously 
Um, I'm already working on like the V5 or something. <laughs> so, but, but it's pretty cool. But um, it, it, it's sometimes, and I need to remind myself too, because you, you kind of start getting like, oh, we're not get, things are not getting smaller. Why are we not getting further ahead? And then I have to put on this prototype and just walk around in the office and make people laugh. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, so here's, uh, here's Joe. It's my um, product engineer I'm working really closely with. Um, and this is a model, so it's not a fair comparison, really. <laughs> um, but, you know, for impact, it, ma it makes a lot of sense. Um, so, <clears throat> I think when you are in these really, really uncomfortable situations, you have this cr incredibly hard task. Someone is asking you to make something impossible, basically. Like, how would you make that comfortable and beautiful? It's just, it's just doesn't make sense. Um, so. What I try to always do is set up design principles. And I think even if I'm talking about design in this specific case, I think it applies to a lot of professions. Um, and it's, it's really about setting up what are the key goals? What are the key goals that we always have to filter a decision through? Because in the messy process, if you're trying to make something create something really amazing, it's very, very hard to lose track of what's really important, especially with technology. You, continuously want to add sensors and uh, battery life and, and all these things to, to make it even better. But in that process, you may actually make um, the problem worse. Um, so in the case of glass, my main design principle was simplicity. You see how it can be this complex thing. And the thing is, people really don't want to know what's going on on the inside. People just want it to make for it to work. Um, so we definitely had that as a main motto through, throughout the process. The second principle is lightness. And I think um, it's not only about physical lightness, but visual lightness too. Um, there was another early prototype, the black one you see here. It had the same components as glass currently does, but it looked really, really techy and heavy and frightening. So if you guys think glass is frightening today, well, now you see how it could have been. Um, and I think the last principle is um, scalability. It's really important to, from the very beginning, think about how is this gonna evolve over time? How can we anticipate issues that are gonna come um, along the way? So in this case, um, you see um, the prescription glasses for glass. Uh, and it's the same technology, it's just the frame coming off and you can attach a different frame. Um, the second um, method that I'm using, which is quite obvious, but um, I think it's something that, you know, we all could do even more, I wanna do it more, and it's about visualizing your ideas, and in this case with, with prototypes. Um, Here's a snapshot of uh, my desk, actually, um, a few, few months ago. Um, but it's, it's an incredible tool, right, when you were trying to push the envelope. Instead of talking about things, glue things together and don't be too fancy about it. Um, and then here you actually see uh, an appearance model, and it looks very, very similar to glass. But this is actually a non-functional model that I created two and a half years ago. And this is the Explorer edition. So it really shows if you set a high goal and if you inspire your teams with something concrete, you can get there, even though it's, it's hard along the way and pretty uncomfortable. Um, and I think what I touched on before about scalability is really important um, when you're trying to do really hard difficult things is to design for evolution. Anticipate that things are not gonna work out. Think about ways that you, from the beginning, can um, design in ways of, of evolving things over time. Um, so in the case of glass, I mean, yes, what you've seen is the core device, but it's a whole ecosystem of, of other things that we've now been able to create since we from the beginning anticipated that one style doesn't fit all. 
and this will just continue to evolve over time. Um, yeah, and here you see Greg, one of our, um, the, the earliest users of, of wearable technology. He used to wear, not too long ago, a huge backpack with a computer in it and cables strapped all the way um, to his head, but now he can wear um, his regular frames and glass. Um, yeah, and here's another example of how we designed something that could really be transformed. Um, <clears throat> so I think one of the things I'm the most excited about beyond just creating something that I didn't even think we could do um, is really how now everybody, not everybody, but all of our explorers and how they're using the product and how inspiring that is to then go after the next challenge of making this something that could be for everybody. So we have a lot of amazing explorer stories and um, I just wanted to share um, a little snapshot video of that um, today. So if you can cue the video, please. My name is Andrew Van Heuvel. I'm Alex Blaschart. I'm Young Gu. I'm Bethany Maddox Sands. This is firefighter Patrick Jackson. Welcome to CERN. We made it. What is a felling axe? <laughs> what song is this? Oh, that's hot. How long does it take a proton to travel the whole loop? Are there bears in the Catskills? Show extraction diagram. Unveiling the new colors for Wimbledon. This is my get down time. Thank you, brother. Take a picture. I'll see you guys when I get back in Michigan. <laughs> this is amazing. So that's all I had today, and remember to stay uncomfortable. Thank you.